Hey everybody, Rodham here. Thanks for tuning in to Stationeers. So, last episode, I, uh, well, I have a little bit of tweaking to do over in the solar tower. So the first thing I want to do is to crank out some batteries. Yes. Big kit batteries. So we're going to need to move some of the steel around. And what we're going to do with this is to set up some batteries to basically feed to the other batteries. I know, confusing, but uh, it will all make sense pretty soon. So this is sort of, you can think of it as uh, battery buffers. And I'll do th three of them. Because why not? I got, I got the power, right? All right, so let's put these batteries in the pack so I can carry all three. There we go. And let me open up my feedback sheet so I can credit the person with the idea. That seems to be the right thing to do. So to make these batteries, we're going to need to do a little bit of welding. Yep. And I'm a little curious why my frame rate has gone from decent to bad, but maybe that's just me. Could be, could be. All right, so the concept here is to add some batteries. I'm gonna add them into the tower, because why not? It'll kind of look like a stoplight. It really won't, but I can pretend. All right, there we go. So three welded towers. And the purpose of this is to store a little bit more power in this tower so that uh, the batteries back at the base don't get low. And this was Mr. Awesome's idea, I believe. So, uh, let's go ahead and plop these down and wire them up appropriately. Uh, alternatively, it was pointed out to me that I could have used the integrated uh, power and uh, data layout for the, um, the solar power panels, and I didn't. Um, yeah, not for any good reason. Uh, I would say the reason I didn't is I'd have to re-set up my, uh, so the logic that I had here, and, uh, I didn't, I was lazy and didn't want to have to do that. Alright, so, I'm gonna put the batteries down, I guess, like that. And what we're gonna do is these batteries are just going to hold charge and feed to the base's batteries. So... They're just general power storage. Um, yes. And I'm... Actually, let's turn on these night vision goggles. This will help, because it's nighttime. Uh, additionally, I'm going to need some heavy cables. I believe... Oh, we have only two spare. So I'm going to have to... Make some of that. I'll get that cooking. So, yeah, uh... Because the base's batteries brown out often, uh, this will help to prevent that brown out. Uh, or should at least. And then the APCs will have uh, nuclear power batteries as backup. So that should, uh, that should be helpful in that regard. So what we're going to do here is... Um... I really should turn these around. All these batteries are kind of facing the wrong way. It occurs to me. Oh, and now my drill does not have charge. Cute. Of course. I'll just take the small one for now. I don't need a whole lot of charge for this. Excuse all of the graphical flashing. It's just the way night vision goggles are, I suppose. And there's not much I can do about that. Alright. Let's turn these around. So, the uh, solar power panels are going to first feed the stationary batteries, and then these stationary batteries are going to send the power uh, over to um, the base. It adds a little bit more cabling, but a lot more power storage, uh, which should prove to be pretty helpful. Alright, so at the bottom here, this here gets clipped. 
like that. And these cables are just going to feed right into the batteries. And then I guess the battery should be turned on. And come daytime, this you'll see how much of a benefit this proves to be. And then the power here will go... We'll, we'll take it out to the side here and bring it down. And I can always add more of these kit batteries if I, uh, if I continue to have sort of shortages and brownouts. Uh, adding more batteries and then additionally adding um, more power generation if, it, if I need. I, I'm not going to do it until I need it so that I can keep pushing towards the pressurization of the base. The big goal, right? Let's go get the rest of the heavy cables that I had cooked up and turn that bench off. It's probably enough. Hopefully it's enough. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, so the systems that use particularly high amounts of power can now draw power from these batteries as, uh, as sort of backup, which should, uh, keep these, the bases batteries at full. So I'm just gonna make double check in to make sure I turned all these on. I did. And, uh... We, of course, could put one on every level if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to start with three, and if we feel, if I feel like I need more, I can add more. Okay. Now that's all set up. Um, Matt Pants uh, had a little request uh, for immersion that was... And let's go ahead and do that. Which was to add frames to the ends or what is currently the ends of the uh, uh, the solar structure here. Now you have to remember that this is Mars and gravity is greatly um, reduced which means that uh, such steel structures are perfectly legitimate um, but for aesthetics I can add the frames to the bottom. Do I have any frames over here? No, not a single one. So what he's requesting is to make it so that it's not teeter-tottering, but to bring frames all the way down. Aesthetics, but you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll indulge. frames take a little while to cook up so and then the next project is going to be walling up probably the exterior first and then maybe doing a little bit of a pressure test just to make sure I don't have any leaks because it's entirely possible to have like holes uh, that you just overlooked and I would pressure test it just by leaking CO2 into the uh, into the base. There's not much reason to use actual base uh, gas. Now, uh, it was requested that, uh, or even suggested rather, that uh, at some point I have some sort of escape um, vacuum tank. So, like, let's say I needed, for whatever reason, to immediately depressurize the base, or you know, to vacuum it out. Uh, let's say it's a fire or some toxins get in there. Um, to have a holding tank that also does a little bit of filtering. Filter out anything that doesn't belong in it. Um, you know. And then put the rest of the stuff, um, the rest of the gas into a, a, a lot, probably a pretty large holding tank. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. If you have other ideas, sort of like quality of life type ideas to add to this base that make sense and not features. Things that you think should belong in base version 1.0, so to speak, and not like, oh, you should have a, you know, fully gas automated furnace, because that's, that's feature, right? That's not like, I need this to survive. I'm th saying f uh, things that you think I need, absolutely need, need to survive, uh, suggest it, because I am definitely on the market for those sort of, uh, if you, if you want to live, do this. All right, so I guess at this point we are uh, walling up this bad boy. So what I'm going to start to do is to weld the bottoms here because they they need to be airtight. I guess we can wall them to, uh, off too, but I don't really have any cables that are running underneath the base. Uh, I don't like building underneath the base like that because it's, uh, it's really, really annoying. And then we also have to decide on uh, which way our composite walls are going to go. So, um, yeah. Because there's sort of like two styles, I guess. There's the horizontal and the vertical. And I think I'm going to go with vertical. Another thing I would like to do is to add uh, access doors to the base so that I can access the uh, I can access the crawl space. I think that would be pretty useful. And I'm going to be walling off everything, even things that don't really need walling off for aesthetic purposes. Um, these foundational pieces obviously don't require it. All right, looks like my solar power or my uh, NVGs can be turned off. Oh man, that is really, I mentioned this before, hard on the eyes. I don't know if it's just me or not, but yikes. Every time I flick those on or off, as you can see, it, it requires a a not insignificant amount of oh have I been doing windows this whole time oh Jesus and I just killed a frame too didn't I well I'm officially officially a putz All right, let's fix that we could have windows for the crawl space um, that would actually be sort of cool I'm not gonna lie uh, but, um, I think it makes more sense to have it be a wall. Well, I'll, what I'll do is I'll add doors so that we'll be able to crawl in there. Um, but it won't be pressure sealed or anything like that. Meaning that, uh, you know, it will just be Martian Atmo or whatever the, uh, uh something like that. And then on top of this, uh, not only am I going to have to wall the externals, but then I have to wall the internals as well. It's a lot of resources. Um, a lot, a lot of resources. So there will be a big old construction of uh, plastic as well. Great, right? You know, we... Uh, we pollute the hell out of Earth, covered in plastics, and now uh, here I am doing it to Mars. Luckily, this is a video game, and I'm not actually doing it. Alright, so those are all the walls I had made. Uh, if I want more walls, I'm gonna have to use up the last of my steel, so let's go do that. Wall. Now, any sort of designs that I want to add to the base, I can always add um, at a later date. Like specialty, sort of flat padded, etc. I just want to sort of get it, get the externals walled off so that a pressure test can be, can be run. Now, the only other issue is 
for us to get it all plasticed off, uh, I'm going to have to... Yeah, this auto lathe is going to be pretty well taxed. I could, I guess, as I'm making walls... Make the um, plastics on the... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. The plastics on the uh, fabricator. Uh, but it's not not that efficient. But I might as well have two things cranking them out, right? So let's trash that hydroponics and suffer the s lack of sorting here. Oh, dear. I'm not even exact. I see glass sheets. Well, we're going to need some glass sheets, but I'll start with plastic. We're BU. Oh, it wouldn't be in kits. No, it's down. Come on, you're killing me. Iron, glass, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna make some glass then. I can't even find it. And the fabricators don't exactly have a search function that works. All right, 20 glass sheets. Because if we wanted the plastic, uh, yeah, I just couldn't find plastic sheets. I was probably staring at it, knowing me. I just wasn't able to find it. All right, so the windows, there aren't going to be too many, but the ones we... Oh, we still need plastic sheets for that. Uh, the ones we have will uh, will window off. So back to the sidings. This whole back wall needs these composites. So the advantage of um, leaving open crawl spaces is maintenance is going to be really, really easy. Alternatively, I could have just used steel and uh, welded up the frames, but then uh, until we added internals, it wouldn't really be airtight, and you could run the, into the problem where, uh, you know, if you didn't have double-sided si double walls on the inside, you could run into the problem where you needed to do maintenance, but you'd have to vacuum to decompress the base. Rapid decompression. All right, this structure is looking significantly weirder. And as you can see, we are grinding through our steel here, but I've accounted for that as I have iron and coal lined up, ready to go. I should stop using C, it doesn't always play nice. Alright, so right here, I'm actually going to remove this. So some of these are just going to be doors uh, for the crawl spaces. And for now, um, I'm going to just wall off the solar logic. I can move it if I really, really care to sometime in the future, but for now, I'm plenty happy just walling it off. Hunger caution, huh? I don't feel hungry. Definitely easier with the lights on. Alright, let's go get the um, silicon out of here. Let's just trash the rest of this. Alright. Silicon. Time to make plastic sheets. So plastic sheets print up a bit faster. Jetpack 
But we're gonna need a whole lot of them, so I'm gonna let them print. Um, that might not be the last wall. I know there's actually gonna be one right here. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's most of them. Oops, that was the wrong way. It's also not welded. But I guess that's, uh, the only thing that's gonna have uh, access to that is the crawl space. So it's not that big of a deal. Alright, there we go. Gonna put my wall kits away. Start adding plastic everywhere. Really quickly, the base will go from a weird sort of skeletal flat frame that we have now into something that resembles pretty. Or at least, you know, in my opinion. Cycle that interior. Light Another thing I should do is check on the battery array uh, that I just added to make sure it's all all's well, you know? I'll do that in a moment. Make sure it's charging. Actually, I can see the power levels from here. It's Light. it's working. Oh. And this should keep the base's batteries from dipping into, or dipping at all, really. Um, if I come over here, you can see all these batteries are nice and powered up. I guess the bottom one has the least amount of power. And then those feed to these base batteries. So we have a lot more power storage as a result. Uh, which should be great. Uh, there is the slight possibility that if a lot of power is required downstream, um, we would run into a situation where even the heavy cables could potentially burn out. I'm not exactly sure how much a kit battery can power can give. Because if if they can only give, like, let's say, 10 megawatts, then we're fine. But if it can give more than, you know, if it can give enough to burn it out, then, yeah, that's a consideration to, to uh, you know, to contemplate needing a uh, transformer or something similar to prevent uh, a blowout. But that's not that hard to do. I would just need to put a transformer between those three new batteries and the rest of the base. And it would be all set. Now some of this, like this, is all temporary, so I don't... I can remove it, uh, eventually. Um, and the base will look a little bit nicer. And then a lot of the, um, the vents that are pulling gases... out of plastic sheets that are pulling gases for filtering purposes um, those vents can be moved I don't really need them where they are I don't really care where they go to be honest I mean I think it will always be helpful to be gr uh, filtering atmospheric gas um, but at some point we'll have like quote unquote enough And a lot of the, you know, inner cabling, wiring, all the guts of the base are being hidden now. Uh, something's wrong there. <laughs> Alright, I'll fix that. There's, there's like two different styles, a horizontal, or vertical rather. And I switched them up. I probably did that kind of everywhere, I bet. When it's blaringly obvious, I'll fix it. I don't even know if um, if I'm fixing it the correct way. Maybe I'm just having more things match incorrectly. Entirely possible. Luckily, the pattern doesn't really continue at the corners.
And then these holes here are going to be uh, maintenance panel doors, like access doors. All right. I'm probably going to need more plastic sheets than this, but for now I'm going to stop manufacturing them because I don't want to over manufacture them. Because uh, I'm also going to need glass. I'm not 100% sure how much glass I'm going to need, but it's, you know, if I use all my silicon this way. I still have silicon that I could print up as well. We have so many uh, plastic sheets being manufactured that it's throwing the uh, the storage. Okay, so I missed some up there. It's throwing storage like around. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Tomorrow when it's daylight, it'll be nice to take a step back and take a gander at the base. It should look a lot different than it has in the past. And I do have some sensors and stuff like that sort of poking through. And there's plenty that needs to be windowed off. Some things need to be walled off. But uh, the bulk of the work, the walling work, has been done. So that's exciting. So I do believe I've got every window but this top one. Uh, then I also need to do stuff like flooring. As you can see, there's still holes and whatnot. Plus I haven't... I I'm going to wait to do that because... Um, uh, because I, I don't want to... Ha you know, I have plumbing and stuff like that to do as well. But what I will do is put in all of the windows. Except for that top window for now. I'll leave that one open so I can do some quick maintenance. So the interior decorating is going to wait a little bit longer than the exterior. I suppose that mimics true in real life. Um, just because I, I, I am valuing access. Okay, so as you can see, yeah, there's all sorts of wrong patterns here that I uh, may want to fix. It will drive some of you batty, I'm sure. It's already driving me batty, and I'm, I'm not usually bothered by stuff like that. Okay, that's a little bit better. And then pretty much everything I plastered on this side is all incorrect. It's the old adage of uh, measure twice, twice, cut once. I definitely did not do that. I was changing up the style of walls as I saw fit everywhere. Doesn't help that I was doing it at night in the dark. Alright, let's not use the C key anymore so that it doesn't keep changing it up. Take a step back. Oh, too far. Looks a wee bit nicer. Uh, yep. I did not, however, make that mistake on the other side. So, I can claim some small victory. glass oh that's my welding torch 
I like to try to keep large batteries in my power tools, because... Uh, I definitely use the power tools quite a lot. So I think the... Oh, I got the pattern wrong here as well. <laughs> My goodness. Um, I was about to say, I think the bottom floor is all set and pressurized, but then I noticed. Um, right, well, I left my angle grinder over here because the battery was low. I'll let that large battery charge up and just throw the small one in there. about to get daylight again so taking a look at the batteries all of them stayed fully powered overnight uh, so the new battery buffers definitely worked and worked well that wasn't a base under load however so it's possible uh, that I need to add more sort of buffering um, but those sort of tweaks I'll make once we have quote unquote full load and full load means like a full base with all its lights and everything running, that kind of stuff. Uh, making sure that we have enough to power that on. Alright, first floor looks sealed tight. Second floor should be sealed tight except for the door. So let's get two doors made for that purpose. Um, these are just going to be doors. Kit doors, regular old kit doors. No frills about them, so we need iron and copper. Uh, no, that's gold. Where's my iron? Take a quick. Oh, there's some plastic. Take a quick look at the uh, the tower here in daylight because we've not been really looking at it in daylight. I think it looks nice. My two cents, if it's worth anything. All right, so there's a frame here that needs to get removed, and then we should be able to slap the door in. Nope. Oh, a composite door. Why well, wasn't allowing me to do glass? Composite roll cover? I could even do that. Oh, and I do believe that's backwards. We'll just do composite door. And then I'll have to build that up. Glass probably wasn't working because of cables that are running around it or something like that. I could figure it out if, if I needed to. Alright, so we have some steel frames to put away. Closet door, but maybe the power should face inside. So I'm going to fix the other one as well. Wrench to deconstruct, okay. I don't know what battery network that'd be placed on, but um, I can brainstorm that all right glass to continue with a crowbar oops 
did not mean to uh, crowbar off a wall piece. Now that's the thing, when you're playing multiplayer, I did notice that a lot of the times players will, uh, for lack of a better term, troll. They will absolutely, positively demolish stuff you're working on. And that happens often enough that it, it can be annoying to play multiplayer. And even the best, most, um, the most uh, vigilant admins are going to have issues. Because it, it does not, honestly, does not take a lot of effort to destroy stuff. Creation in this game is easy. Or, uh, hard, rather, and, um, destruction is, is very, very easy. Alright, so we have some double-lined internal windows. It doesn't really serve purpose, it just looks a bit dimmer. Um, I, it might help with pressure, I'm not sure about that, though. So, the question here is, am I vacuum-sealed? So I can tell right now I'm not, because those... This right here needs some roof or uh, walling. All right, let's do a quick assess. Night. Oh. This is what the base looks like uh, that kind of looks terrible that little solar logic unit from this angle it's not so bad I don't know I wasn't making this to make it look nice it's it just functional inside inside is what will count uh, or at least I'm gonna have to tell myself that due to the hideous nature of this base uh, yeah so, the way to be able to tell if this is all ready to go, I suppose, would be... First off, let's um, turn off this volume pump. Um, so our CO2 starts to build up. And up, and up, and up. And then, uh, what I'm going to do is grab some materials and set up a way to just dump uh, CO2 into the base. And if the pressure climbs above, like, 2... It's pressurizable, um, and then if it doesn't, we have a leak somewhere, and you'll be able to see the, for lack of a better term, wind lines, the gas, the, no, I can call them gas lines, because or wind lines, because gas lines sounds a bit different. Uh, you'll be able to see the wind lines if you have, um, if you have some sort of leak somewhere. Uh, alternatively, you know, if you were really impatient, like, let's say you were out of, uh, you know, you needed to get your suit off or something, you could just open up the, uh, the pressurized, um, oxygen that, uh, that you have. So, out of curiosity, yeah, these batteries are charging up, they're in the greens now. So, that's, that's good. And then these solar power panels should be pulling 99s. Yep, they're all 99s. Good. Alright, so for this to properly close, these doors have to be uh, crowbarred shut. Now, the thing is, yeah, in the in the final version of this, uh, these doors obviously are going to be separated on different floors so that, uh, so that the crawl space is Martian Atmo and the inside of the base is something different. But uh, this is just a general are my ducks in a row test. All right, so the CO2 pressure should be climbing, and all I got to really do to test this thing is to slap a passive vent anywhere I can manage to put it. Come on, why do these? Sometimes these passive vents just like don't want to be placed anywhere, and they be they get real fussy. All right. There we go. So, uh, this passive vent is going to leak CO2 gas really, really rapidly into the base. 
So I'll probably be thrown into a wall. Um, let me turn off my jetpack and sort of brace for it. And then also maybe get a wrench. <laughs> Alright. And we'll undo it. So now my external pressure is a hundred and about a hundred. It will, uh, I'm being thrown into the wall, like I said. It will somewhat equalize around the base. And what I'm curious, cur curious, what I'm curious about is once it's somewhat pressure equalizes, do I have a leak anywhere? And it will be pretty obvious because it won't equalize if I do have some sort of leak. Uh, and I have, I'm not worried about the amount of CO2 that I'm going to need. So that's why I use CO2. So if we take a look at the Atmo analyzer here, uh, the vast majority of this base should be CO2. Yeah. Like trace amounts, everything else, pretty much it's all CO2. Yep. To be expected. Um, now what's happening is... Yes, I am missing a window here. That window honestly could have blown out, though, uh, due to the fast, rapid pressurization, and not because I didn't put a window there. Um, we, uh, I, well, we, I definitely pressurized that base probably faster than I should have unleashing the entire um, CO2 tank <clears throat> all in a moment. Apparently it blew out a few windows. Maybe I did forget to place those windows there. Usually when you have a blown out window, it's just the one and it's not uh, it's not more than, than one. Yeah. It would be pretty unusual for it to be three. So now, it should be pretty obvious if air is escaping somewhere, just doing a looking around the base like this, right? So these wind lines are being pulled into the passive vents, or the active vents rather, passive. Um, before I forget. We haven't double lined all the windows up top, but the ex external ones are, are all set. Alright, I'm gonna... For now, I will carry around glass, plastic, and steel in my, uh, in my inventory in case I need to patch something, fix something. I'll even keep wall kits. Alright, I could crow by my way in, but now seems to be a pretty good time to use the uh, airlock. All right, so I would say it looks as if it looks as if um, the base is somewhat uh, pressurized. I'm going to do this little test again. And before I put that in, let me get my wrench. I could just use a valve, I know, but... go it's interesting that this the game sounds very very different as soon as you're in a pressurized environment there is um for lack of a better term like delicate noises that you wouldn't have noticed or even been able to hear before like things falling to the ground because of course in vacuum there is no sound so the sound that you get uh before you are in a pressurized environment is just vibrational sound through your suit it's not to say that there wouldn't be sound in space. If you're in a spacesuit, anything that's vibrating your suit also vibrates the air molecules in your suit. So, you know, it makes sense that there is some sound, but not a full, complete amount of sound. So I, I find that really cool. So it looks as if I would have to say we are pressurized. We're definitely not leaking air anywhere. So I didn't... Other than those three windows I originally missed, um, we're all sealed up here. That's really cool. 
so now at this point, I have to just vacuum all of this air back out to space, or just, like, let a leak go. Uh, I'll probably do the latter. I'll just leak it out the top, because I find that funny. So, what's left to do is to probably double line all of the exterior, uh, all the windows and walls that face the exterior, for the most part, and then start filling in the guts on the inside, getting it more ready. So, here we are. We, uh... I sort of was flung. Yeah, I turned off my jetpack so you can see as the air escapes out of the base, uh, I'm sort of floating here. That's pretty cool, right? My guy is. Obviously, this is not the way physics would work, but I still say it's pretty cool where I'm uh, uh, sort of just floating here. Maybe it'd be cooler if I had my uh, night vision goggles on. Yeah, look at me. Floating on air. I can't even move. Yeah, why should I be able to, right? I don't have any thrust. Alright. Yeah, I'll turn my jetpack on. So, uh, I would have to say, yeah, very cool feedback that you guys had about these batteries. Um, and if I was smart, I would have, uh, moved my solar logic and put these all on a combined circuit, uh, and just carried the data on the heavy cables. That would have been, that would have made more sense, and maybe that's something I'll do in the future. Um, yeah, this, this base is very basic, no paint, just plastic, um, but it's functional. It's closed up. There are still some features on it that I would need to add, like... Um, walling up the interior crawl space so that, that the base actually becomes airtight. That's something that's going to be important or whatever. There's a whole laundry list of stuff, honestly. But uh, we're getting closer every day or every episode. All right, guys. Well, if you have any feedback for me, drop me a line. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, like, share, subscribe. Keep in touch. Hop on Discord, and I'll catch you all later. Adios.